Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic, opening well, and today I'll be doing a bit of a retro review. I know that it's not too far into the past, but hey, it's still retro, right? Of The Amazing Spider-Man, the first film from the Andrew Garfield era as Spider-Man. I've had a lot of interest in revisiting this film and it's really really bad sequel ever since seeing spider-man no way home and since my wife has been wanting to see no way home i thought that it was actually really required in a lot of ways to see the andrew garfield films which she never actually saw to better get the emotional arcs that his character goes through in no way home and just to have a little bit of a better background as to the iteration of this character as of course we know that there are some villains from the <laughs> no way home film that are also of course featured for the first time here in the amazing spider-man franchise and so that's kind of the reasoning as to why i'm revisiting these films but before for, for, before going any further into my review please make sure you smash that like button Love that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey. And also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification bell notification turned on. That way you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. And I'm falling apart today. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into The Amazing Spider-Man. And boy, oh boy. Yeah, I forgot how, how much of a mess the <laughs> these films actually are. So we just finished this one uh, last night. And then we started The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And as anyone who's seen these films knows, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is significantly worse than this film. Uh, however, that being said, this film also does have its fair share of problems, most especially, at least for me, is the villain. I, I just, for me, the, the villain, especially the CGI for the villain, is just really not that great. Um, though I will say it holds up a lot better than I thought it was originally going to. Um, you know, especially in the more uh, action-packed scenes, it definitely was not the best of the cinematography, or rather the best of the uh, of the of CGI effects, um, and it still definitely does not look good by any means. However, I will say that it does not look nearly as bad for a film that came out in 2012 uh, in comparison. With all that being said, though, yeah, this film definitely has some highs and some lows, and obviously one of the first highs for me is Andrew Garfield. I know that not a lot of people like his iteration of Spider-Man, and I do think that there is actually legitimate criticism there to be found for it, but I just cannot deny the fact that I find the actor Andrew Garfield to be very compelling. He is a very talented actor who unfortunately was given a terrible script and direction that just did not fit or suit the character at all. In fact, even my wife was you know, talking to uh, me throughout the film and was saying, you know, he just doesn't come across as likable. I thought that Spider-Man and Peter Parker were supposed to be likable persons, and she just wasn't getting it. She found him to be very rude and was like, why would anyone actually like this person? And she didn't even understand really the relationship that kind of, you know, came out of nowhere, it seemed, from uh, between Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy in the film, and I have to say that she was totally right on that, and I think that it also speaks to someone like her, who is much more of a, you know, somewhat of a, a normie, but is still willing to be able to uh, be critical of films when they are uh, problematic, because she had, again, a lot of criticisms of that, and the current film that we're watching, too, but I think that it does speak a lot to one of the biggest issues that this film had going for it, and why, for so long, everyone's kind of had this very negative you know, remembrance of this film and of this franchise and of this iteration of the character and why so many people just did not like uh, and, and really kind of attached to Andrew Garfield a lot of negativity where they really should have been putting the focus instead where it should have been, which is on the director, Mark Webb, and on the writers, which in this case were three writers of the screenplay, James Vanderbilt, Alvin Sargent, and Steve Close, because really those are the two areas that this film struggles with the most is that the character just does not come across as likable. There's so many things that happen in the film that are just so uh, cringeworthy. I remember one of the scenes that always gets me, and I always forget about it, is the scene when he throws a football and it bends, literally bends, one of the, uh, the goalposts on the football field, like one of the uprights. And it's just, it's so cringe because all I can think, and obviously I know it's a comic film, but you look to that, and to anyone who is kind of like in the movie or in the zone, thinks to themselves immediately when that happens, wait a minute. That would never happen. The The ball, if it was going at that kind of speed to bend metal, would have exploded or there would have been something else going on. And also, no one would just look over and be like, oh, that was kind of cool. They'd be like, wait a minute, this guy just bent one of the metal goalposts 
just by throwing a football, what's going on here, right? They would have signed him up right away. It, it, again, there's other moments like that throughout the film that just you scratch your head and you think, wow, this is just really bad writing overall. And so the writing really suffers from this film. The acting, I think, is actually one of the only things that kind of saves it because even though the character of... I even forget what the character's name is. It was the character of, of Lizard. Um, but anyway, the, the person... Let's go ahead and see if I can get it. Yeah, so Lizard. So, uh, but, but, but Reese Ifans, I like this actor a lot. And I think that as Dr. Kirk Connors, I thought that he actually did a good job as far as like his acting, like as far as the actual performance itself. But obviously the character of, of Lizard is just one that, again, the CGI just doesn't do as much uh, to, I think, support the character. And I've been saying this a lot more recently, but it really does, I think, speak a lot of, a, a lot of truth. And that is that I wish that a lot of these films and a lot of the films that are currently coming out, we're using some of the practical effects that were used on shows like that of Swamp Thing. And I keep using Swamp Thing as an example because they were able to use and build a practical, basically a, a suit for Swamp Thing and then use certain CGI elements when they needed to, when you know practical effects couldn't go far enough. And I just thought that it captured everything so much more better and authentically. And I think it would have been actually really cool to see more elements like that in this film. Unfortunately, of course, they decided to go the full CGI route, and because of that, as the years go on, it's going to continue to become more and more outdated, more so than it already is. Also, I want to say that going back to this film as far as positives, because again, I know this film is definitely a mixed bag of negatives and positives, with most of, most of it being kind of to say, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I could have probably just, you know... You know, not had this film happen, but I actually do like the character of Dennis Leary. I think Dennis Leary does a good job as Gwen Stacy's dad in the film, and so I like his character and his character arc. Also, I love the choices of Martin Sheen and Sally Field as being, you know, Uncle Ben and Aunt May. I wish that they gave Martin Sheen a little bit more to do. I mean, I think that obviously we all know the origin story of Uncle Ben and, and what happens to Uncle Ben, you know, because it's, it's been done now so many times, but I feel like his character and the, the acting prowess that he has would have been so much better suited for a little bit more in the actual film. And it's sad that he, they don't use him nearly as much as they possibly could for it. And uh, Sally Field also, I want to say, she's a great, she's a great Aunt May. I actually like her a lot. She's a great talent, very talented actress. And so that is something that I think this film does have in in droves is that it has a lot of very talented actors the unfortunate thing is that it did not have a very good director and it did not have very good writers and I think ultimately that is the downfall of this film and also of the franchise in general of the Andrew Garfield era I don't think it's Andrew Garfield that was the problem in this film because again his acting was actually really good the, the emotional scenes especially the one where he's yelling at the end of the film after the death of Dennis Leary's character, like, it's very powerful stuff. Not a lot of actors can pull that off. In fact, most of the time when you have characters yelling, most of the time, like, the director or the, the editors, they will actually mute the actor screaming because usually it just does not come across. But you can actually very faintly hear just his screams, and it's so guttural. He is able to pull that off very well. It's just sad that he did not have a very good writing team or director to kind of pull him through to actually capture the Peter Parker and to capture... I know, River. I know. She, she's get very, very upset by this film as well. Um, but overall, I, I look at this film and I still appreciate certain elements of it. You know, I still appreciate the fact that it did introduce the world to Andrew Garfield in a way that hadn't been done before, right? To show the acting prowess that he had. Um, not to mention, of course, you also have music by, by James Horner. You also have a very well-known... Um, well-known composer who did the uh, who did this the, the the music for this film and the music also just has a very again very good theme throughout the film that is able to support the film now it's not iconic in the way that you'd be able to remember it but i do think that every part of it really does uh suit what you see on screen and really does uh you know for me do what a score is supposed to do, right? There's two things that I think a score is supposed to do. It's either supposed to support the film so that it's not distracting, right? Instead, it's supporting all the things that are going on on screen, or it's meant to be iconic and it's meant to be a character in and of itself. And I don't think it fits that part, but I do think it fits the one where it comes to actually supporting the film. But overall, this film is definitely a mixed bag. I, I really wish... It's crazy that it's been 10 years since this film first came out. It's also crazy that after No Way Home, people were clamoring for an Amazing Spider-Man 3. But I think that has more to do with the fact that Andrew Garfield is the one who brought redemption to that character because his acting was always there. In both films, his acting prowess was there. He was just waiting for a better writer and 
and a better director to be able to convey the character of Peter Parker in a much more consistent fashion and in a much better way. And I think that that was what was able to happen in No Way Home. And so now that everyone is able to recognize, wait a minute, he's actually really talented. He's actually really good. That's why you're now having some people clamoring for Amazing Spider-Man 3. And hopefully if that does happen, if they do decide to embrace a multiverse and they decide to bring about, you know, an Amazing Spider-Man 3 while still continuing the Tom Holland stuff, if they decide to do that, I hope that they bring in a good director that's going to be able to actually bring forward this film uh, and bring forward this version of the character in a much better way, in a much better fashion. So if I had to give this specific film a grade, though, I'm going to have to give it a C plus, you know, because there are just so many problems that exist in the film from a story perspective, from a visual effects perspective. But man, oh, man, nothing compared to and River is already getting excited because she knows when I do a retro review of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Things are going to get really, really bad. Uh, but anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about the film? Uh, you know, obviously, this is a retro film, so it's been a long time. But do you remember not liking this film? Again, Emma Stone's version of Gwen Stacy was just, you know, it was okay. The chemistry between her and... Um, the chemistry between her and Andrew Garfield was very palpable. You could tell that they were in a relationship or likely in a relationship and, you know, that they had a lot of chemistry together. Like, that was very clear on set. I mean, I don't know much about the comics as far as what Gwen Stacy is supposed to be like. And so whether or not she fits that role or not, again, Emma Stone, you know, as actor is, I think, fine. But all the other characters, I think, do a good job as far as the acting and the performances that they are able to give in the actual film. Um and and obviously there is the the ending right the 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 mid credit scene because there's no post credit scene to this film which just leaves so much mystery and that's the other thing too is that there's so many uh, elements to the story that have not been either uh, figured out or have not been uh, you know that they have not been brought to conclusion like what is you know the the, the story arc with Peter Parker's uh, you know parents and the roles that they played and. You know, there's so much more I thought that that could have been done there with this film and with the next film, too. And so maybe we'll get that one day. Who knows? You never know. Uh, you know, never say never, I guess. What do y'all thoughts about this film? Let me know in the comment section down below. If that's the video, smash that like button. Not that fire button on Odyssey. Y'all all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. Before going any further, I wanted to give a very, very huge special shout out to one of my Valkyries, one of my longtime supporters, Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a supporter and for being a mod on this channel. And now for a huge special shout out to all of my members who are at the keeper of the Bifrost level and above on Patreon, Subscribestar, and Locals. So first on Patreon. Brandon, let's go Brandon, Christopher Bowman, Garrett Searles, Hymir Irie Hymason, Jacob from Holland, Jacob Juice, who you can check out on his Letterboxd, Jacob Juice is how you can find it, Jeffrey Toon, Joey Horn, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Mad Mike Jackson, special shout out for him in a second, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Orange Hat Reviews, you can check out his channel, Orange Hat Reviews, Rosetta Allen, you can check out her channel as well, Stan Andrian, and Miss Martin Muses, who also has a YouTube channel, and a special shout out, as I mentioned, to Jacob Juice from Holland, again, letterbox.com slash Jacob Juice for more information about him, and a special shout out to my members over on Subscribestar, Matt317, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Mr. Roy, and a huge shout out to my newest chosen of Valhalla member, Luca Illich, J Rod, the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank y'all very much for supporting on Subscribestar, and to uh, two of the members who are supporting me over on Locals who asked for special shout outs. First off, Minnesota hockey fan, let's go, let's let, let's get a hockey player, and UAB Mad Dog Mike Jackson for the win. 
Thank you very much for supporting me. And also Robert Barnes on Locals as well. Anyway, if you want a special shout out, and Brett D90 for that matter, if you want a special shout out at the end of every single video, please check out that top link at the very top of the video description. It'll give you more information about the different tiers and what you get every single month. Thank you guys for your love, for your patience for this month's shout out video as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.